I'm working on the Victoria Station Upgrade Project. It's a £350 million station capacity enhancement project on behalf of London Underground. Here we've built new passenger tunnels and new ticket halls in order to improve the flow of passengers around the station itself. We're standing here in the Duke of York pub, uh, which we had to demolish originally to provide ground treatment for the tunnelling works below. And we're now in the process of rebuilding it and reinstating it back to the owner. I'm the head of engineering for the Victoria Station upgrade project here. Um, and that involves looking after the permanent and temporary works designs, the quality uh, management of the project and also the assurance and handover of the project. I'm working as an assistant project manager and as an assistant engineer, both on the client side, which means as a assistant project engineer I'm looking after a lot of scoping works which don't relate necessarily to the Duke of York part of the project. Um, as an assistant engineer I'm doing a lot of assurance type work, so reviewing compliance submissions, method statements, risk assessments, that kind of thing. Uh, my name's Stefan Young, I'm a site engineer for BAM Nassau, I've been working with the company since October 2009 and uh, at present I'm working towards professional qualification with the ICE. So on the client side my, my responsibility is to review the, um, review the submissions from the contractor in terms of their program and their, their method of works and then raise any queries I may have and have those addressed or have changes made if, they, if they're not explained adequately. So we have weekly progress reviews which I attend and sometimes chair where we meet with the contractor and discuss progress on site and sort of look forward and try and see any problems that we may have coming up and try and put methods and uh, measures in place to ensure that those don't impact our programme. So we share two party walls of this building with a theatre that has a show opening soon. So one thing we've had to do is move over a lot of the loud works onto the night shift to ensure that we don't interfere with their rehearsals or their performances. So as site engineer for Duke York, it will be my responsibility to order uh, plant and materials um, and then liaising with the foreman as to how to properly implement these and achieve the programme. Additionally, I am responsible for supervising and managing uh, various subcontractors that we have working on the project. We review our standards constantly, nominally every three months or if there is a change in the way that we're doing any work or a change of the type of work that we're doing. So that's my responsibility to make sure that we are current and up to date in what we're required to do and that it matches the requirements of our actual job descriptions and work. In order to manage quality, uh, I will typically be responsible for requesting inspections, uh, taking photos, filling in uh, quality checklists uh, as to the works that are done. This is essentially the engineer's role on the project, so it, it might not be the most exciting aspect, however it is vitally important, and all those records get filed away in an ITP and uh, are submitted to the client at the end of the job to ensure that the, the, uh, the build quality is correct. In terms of managing quality, I recently reviewed the structural compliance submission for the Duke of York, which involved going through and making sure the appropriate check certificates were in place and approved, and also reviewing all the structural drawings and ensuring that those were all in place. I passed on my comments to the contractor, and as a result of those, a few changes have been made to some of the connection details and also to some of the inspection and test plans. On this project I'm a site engineer which means that I'm essentially the intermediary between the designer and the lads on site. So if there's anything that the designer needs to communicate that will generally come through me and vice versa if the lads find an issue on site I'll take that back up to the designer. As the head of engineering it's my responsibility to ensure that the quality management procedures are followed by everyone on site in particular for the Duke of York, as we're building to different standards, different requirements than the rest of the project, as we have a different client, I developed a new quality management system to put in place specifically for these works. I then was required to d brief our guys and, and our engineers on actually how to use those because they differed from their day-to-day -day requirements. In some cases I won't be qualified to give an answer if a query is raised on site. One such example is the red steel, the temporary facade retention which you see behind me. In cases such as uh, that where the permanent steel work that we're installing has uh, clashed with it, I will take that back to the designer and he will provide an answer to the question which I will uh, subsequently send to site. So an example of the type of decision I'll have to make would be that once a floor is complete and the subcontractor has 
completed installing uh, the steel work, I will uh, take an as-built and check against the inspection test plan as to whether their work is up to scratch. The Duke of York reinstatement involved a facade retention scheme of the facade that you can see behind me and the red steel work that you can see is the temporary works frame which we didn't have the specific expertise to do a design of initially so we subcontracted that design out um, the design was completed and then we also subcontracted to the same structural engineer the permanent works design so that we could make that connection between the f existing facade and the permanent works. I reviewed the connection detail between the retained facade and the new permanent works and felt that the connection could be a bit more robust so that was a comment I raised to the contractor who also agreed with me and they instructed the designer to produce a new connection detail that was a bit more robust. Commercially I will forward my uh, records that I take from site um, and issue them to the QS's and planners and they will um, do the bulk of the commercial work. Uh, additionally, I will be submitting requisitions which I will have to run past my superiors to make sure that that is in line with the budget that we've been allocated for the task. I provide support to our commercial law team in evaluating a number of claims that have come in. Um, some of them are relating to the works information to do with the existing station assets and unexpected conditions that, that were encountered. So I use my engineering knowledge to help the commercial team to assess those claims and to provide some insight as to whether or not the, the works were in scope. So reinstatement of the Duke of York pub has involved a number of different commercial issues as well as statutory undertakers. We, the retained facade that we have here is under strict planning um, obligations. We also have two party walls with a grade two listed Victoria Palace Theatre. Um, which involves party wall surveyors and um, agreements under the Party Wall Act. Similarly, from a commercial perspective, our client isn't actually the end user. Um, so we're always going between our client and the end user to agree the scope of works and how the public house is going to be used in the future and what their actual needs are. So that involves a lot of um, communication, not only verbally between all the parties, but formally to make agreements in that way. In addition to that, we're also limited by planning obligations and bringing the building up to standard with the current building regulations. So part of my role was then to get involved with what the building regulations are and see how we can intertwine the two to make sure that we meet all of our statutory obligations. So in order to work on site, it's best to have a uh, thorough knowledge of health and safety legislation such as Health and Safety at Work Act, CDM, and various task-specific uh, regulations such as LOLA uh, and uh, PURE. Initially, I will undertake a risk assessment regarding any task that's undertaken with the aim to essentially remove the risk. If I can't remove it, then to mitigate it. In order to manage health and safety on site, I will be responsible for writing safe me methods of work um, I will then come out on site and brief these to the foreman and the guys who will be undertaking the work and subsequently monitoring it as the work progresses. If I see something on site that is that in a position that can be improved, I will initially go and talk to the supervisor because nine times out of ten they will be able to fix the problem for you, they will be more than willing. One of the work packages on Victoria Station Upgrade is taking place in a confined space and it was my responsibility to review the safe method of work and, and the risk assessment for those works. But having never worked in a confined space before, I, I needed some extra support in that. So I arranged to go on a confined space course, which gave me the knowledge necessary to review those documents and also gave me the entry permit so that I can go in and inspect the works. A lot of the work we do is maintaining that public safety and welfare around our construction sites, as well as obviously the guys that we have working on site. One of the things that I had to do was make agreements with our neighbours in terms of their access arrangements and our access arrangements to make sure that we could still continue doing the job but also we were suitably looking after their personnel as well. I conduct regular site inspections for a, from a health and safety perspective with a representative from the contractor side as well. So together we go around and I identify and they identify any items um, that we think may be health and safety risks and set, set those out with some photographs and show how we want them to be 
uh, remediated. We also tried to identify good practice as well. So only last week I saw some examples of very good housekeeping, which had been a big improvement in the area. And we also like to try and disseminate those to, to encourage a good health and safety culture on site.